Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. We have a very brief psalm now, Psalm 11, concerning various aspects of David's trust in God. He kind of reflects on his trust in God throughout the course of the psalm. And so obviously, he's the author. There's never been any question about that. And this is generally believed to have been written during the period of time that Saul took David's wife, who was Saul's daughter, and gave her to another husband. You may recall that from the the scriptures, but David went through this terrible period of time while fleeing from Saul that Saul took his daughter back and gave her to somebody else. So within the, the psalm itself, David makes a profession of his trust in the Lord, but he continues to point out that things aren't going so well for him in this world. And I'm sure that you have experienced um, uh, things not going well in you in your life from time to time in this world. I've certainly experienced that. But David maintained his trust in the Lord, and, and we should as well. So reading now Psalm 11. For the director of music of David, in the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, Flee like a bird to your mountain. For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. So a very brief but powerful psalm, I think you will agree. And the internal prefix says that this is for the director of music. It was written by David, so once again, uh, intended to be a psalm that's sung and prayed. And right out of the gate, he makes a faith declaration, an open declaration of trust in the Lord. He says, in the Lord I take refuge. Well, that's pretty clear and and, uh, pretty commendable. But then he, he says to the Lord, how can you say to me, Flee like a bird to your mountain. In other words, the Lord is saying, come to me for refuge. And he already said, I take refuge in the Lord. But how's that work, Lord? And he goes on in verse 2. For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, in other words, David's saying, when the foundations of my life seem to be being destroyed, what can the righteous do? And friends, I'm sure that I've experienced this and many times. We know the biblical principles that the Lord is our refuge. Yep, he's our refuge. We know he's our protector. Yep, he's our protector. But we feel like we're under siege. Uh, We feel like we're uh, exposed. We're taking hits. And David, in this period of his life, was experiencing similar attacks and emotions. And then he makes this observation that... Um, At first glance, it seems like he's saying the Lord is high above everything. You know, he's a distant absentee owner watching events unfold on the earth. He says in verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on the earth. His eyes examine them. So in one way, this sounds a, a little distant. But in another way, friends, God is not shaken from his throne no matter what the enemy throws at us on the earth. The Lord is still enthroned in eternity. Heaven is still his throne. The Lord is still the ultimate arbiter of our fates, and our outcome is sure. We'll be with the Lord forever. So David makes the observation, if you will, by faith, that the Lord doesn't miss anything. He sees exactly what's going on in this earth. And although we may be hit, from time to time in the days of our flesh, there will be a reckoning to the Lord who sits in his holy temple. 
the Lord who's resting on his heavenly throne. So we never need to feel like there's any panic in heaven. God is always um, at rest, but he's also aware and concerned. And then David shifts to declarations about faith and how he feels the Lord sees his struggles. He says, the Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. And so David's faith is that ultimately the wicked will experience God's judgment, just like the righteous will experience God's blessing. And then the righteousness and his confidence in God are upheld. In other words, the righteousness of God are affirmed. His confidence in God is upheld. And uh, David shares this as a closing thought. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. And so David is telling us, friends, regardless of how things sometimes seem in turmoil here on the earth, regardless of what our enemies intend, we will ultimately see the Lord and our righteousness will be rewarded. God's justice will win out. The the wicked will pay a price. We don't have to fear or be concerned about that. Now, before I close in prayer, I want to read this psalm a second time in the King James Version. I like the language of this version. Um, I'll make one comment on the last verse uh, related to the difference in the two versions. But let me just read uh, without the prefix Psalm 11 in the King James Version. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness. His countenance does uphold the upright. And once again, that last verse in the King James. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness. His countenance does uphold the righteous. In the NIV, it says a a little different. Um, uh, The Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his, his face. So I love the language of, of both of these. But ultimately, the content is this. David expresses his trust in the Lord. He expresses the fact that he seems to be continuing to have trouble, but he ultimately believes that the Lord will be just and that in the fullness of time, friends, we will all stand before the Lord and say, Lord, you've been more than just. You've been more than fair. You have indeed defended us. You've protected us. You've sustained us. And we're grateful. So, Lord, we too trust you like David. We do believe that you are upright in all of your dealings with each of us. Lord, as your children, we say to you, you are our refuge. And Lord, sometimes it doesn't seem like we're being protected from the things of this world. But Lord, nevertheless, you are our refuge. You're the one that we depend on. You're our shield, our defender. Lord, protect us against the violent. Protect us against the wicked. Lord, examine us and examine those who seemingly oppose us. Correct us where we're wrong and correct those who oppose us in their errors and their wickedness. We pray all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net 
or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.